Hello and thanks for joining us for the Sunday evening edition of Arirang News. I'm Daniel Che. Let's start with a short traffic report here in South Korea. This is the peak summer vacation season here, and it looks like today is the worst possible day to be driving on highways linked to Seoul. According to the Korea Expressway Corporation, around 410,000 cars are expected to be on the roads today. For those driving out of Seoul, the roads started to get congested at around 11 a.m., but things will flow a lot better after 10 p.m. If you're headed to Busan, it will take around 4 hours and 50 minutes to get home, 4 hours to Daegu, and 3 hours for those headed to Gangneung or Gwangju. As for drivers heading back to the capital, traffic will start to ease at around midnight. But for now, expect to be behind the wheel for 5 hours and 20 minutes if you're coming from Busan, slightly more than 4.5 hours from Daegu or Gangneung, and around 3 hours and 50 minutes from Gwangju. Speaking of vacation, President Park Geun-hye is ready to get back to work on Monday after taking a short five-day break. But her vacation doesn't seem to have kept her from working. For the second year straight, she chose to spend her days off at her official residence of Cheongwadae. On Facebook, the president said she spent the time reading various materials, including official reports. It is believed she also worked on her Liberation Day speech and discussed granting presidential pardons with officials. On Tuesday, she will hold a cabinet meeting where she's expected to share her thoughts on several issues, including reforming the labor market and reviving the economy. And in other political news, labor market reforms top the agenda for the National Assembly's August session, which kicks off on Friday. The ruling Senate Party will push for a so-called wage peak system as part of plans to lift the youth unemployment rate. Under the system, the wages of workers nearing retirement would be cut gradually after they turn 58, and the money saved would be used to hire more young people. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy will hold seminars to collect worker opinion before formulating its reform plans. The two parties will also be preparing for the annual parliamentary audit of state affairs in September and will receive briefings from parliamentary committees about an ongoing hacking scandal involving the nation's spy agency. North Korea appears to be installing a cover on its missile launch pad. Analysts say it could be preparing to fire another missile in October as that's when the celebrations for its ruling Workers' Party's 70th anniversary will be held. As if that's not enough to help the regime push itself further away from the international community, today it withdrew from a global military sporting event. Our Connie Kim has this report. Japan's Kyoto News reported Sunday on new satellite imagery showing the installation of a cover over the launch pad at the Sohe Satellite Launching Station in Tongchangni, Charsan County. U.S. intelligence agencies say the details are unclear, but expect the installation to be completed this month. The development is especially concerning as covers were placed on the side and other parts of the launch pad in the final stages of North Korea's preparations for two separate long-range rocket launches in 2012. South Korea reported last month that North Korea had completed an upgrade to the launch pad that would allow it to fire a long-range missile twice the size of the rocket launched in 2012. There is speculation the preparations could be for a possible launch in October to mark the 70th anniversary of the founding of the North's ruling Workers' Party. The move would be sure to further isolate the regime from the international community, though there are signs it may already be taking steps in that direction. Pyongyang on Sunday notified the France-based organizer of an international military sports event to be held in Seoul in October that it'll not attend. Seoul's defense ministry says the North gave no reason for its decision. The North also recently rejected the South's invitation to an international security dialogue set to take place in Seoul next month. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Always mysterious and contradictory at times is North Korea, and they are seeking some kind of isolation at the same time they are seeking to develop its tourism industry. The communist state is promoting attractions in its eastern coastal city of Wonsan and Gumgangsan Mountain. A report in the Kim Il-sung University newspaper highlights the region's historic sites and scenic spots, as well as its beaches, lakes, temples and pagodas. This is in line with the Hermit Kingdom's efforts to develop the area into an international tourism zone for foreign investors. In May, North Korea held an investment briefing for foreigners at Gumgangsan Mountain. Chinese and Swiss investors were reportedly present at the event. 
and shifting our focus back to other parts of the world involving North Korea and South Korea as well. Foreign Minister Yoon byung se and Yukiya Amano, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, discuss ways to continue their cooperation on resolving North Korea's nuclear development. According to foreign ministry officials, the two covered the topic when they met at IAEA headquarters in Vienna on Sunday. They also touched on the subject of a partnership between the IAEA and South Korea, the world's fifth largest nuclear energy power provider. In addition, they discussed the agency's role in implementing the Iran nuclear deal and exchanged views on the agreement's impact on the international nonproliferation system. This was the minister's first visit to IAEA headquarters since taking office in the year 2013. Japan will boost its defense budget to a record high next year as it moves closer to allowing its military to expand its role in conflicts overseas. According to the Nihon Keizai Shimbun, the country's defense ministry is expected to request a budget of more than 5 trillion yen or around 40.3 billion U.S. dollars for 2016. The money will be spent on buying new airborne refueling aircraft and building an Aegis destroyer. And by 2017, Japan is set to have the world's first squadron of U.S. F-35 Joint Strike Fighters, widely said to be the most expensive weapon system in the world. Japan's defense spending has risen every year since Shinzo Abe became prime minister in 2012. Korea's top 10 business groups had a tough time last year amid the ongoing global economic uncertainties. The majority saw their exports fall, with only three experiencing an increase in overseas sales. Our Chi Myung Gil has the numbers and more. Korea's top 10 conglomerates saw their exports fall 4.6 percent on year in 2014. According to data compiled by industry tracker Tebal.com, the combined revenue from exports for the 10 business groups fell to less than 470 billion US dollars last year, compared to 490 billion dollars in 2013. Korea's large firms are heavily export reliant. Data shows that the overseas market was responsible for more than 50 percent of the group's combined revenue last year. Samsung, LG, Lotte, GS, Hyundai Heavy Industries, Hanjin and Hanhua all saw their overseas sales drop last year compared to the previous year, while Hyundai Motor Group, SK and POSCO saw their overseas revenue advance. Samsung Group, which holds Samsung Electronics under its wing, was the biggest loser by posting overseas sales of $160 billion last year, down more than 10 percent from the previous year. On the other hand, Korea's top steel maker, POSCO, raked in $30 billion from the overseas market last year, up 16.4 percent on-year to take up 50.4 percent of its combined revenue. Hanhua Group said Sunday that despite the overseas sales drop, it still plans to support the government's efforts to tackle the high youth unemployment rate by sharply increasing the number of new recruits over the next three years. The group said it would hire more than 5,700 workers in the second half of this year and push to employ more than 17,000 new workers by 2017. Kim young Arirang News. On a more lighter note, let's switch to summer fun. Now, every year, Korea's southern city of Ulsan turns one of its water reservoirs into an eco-tourism attraction that's open to the public for just one month. So what kind of natural wonder can you expect to find at this famous wetland called Hueya Dam Reservoir? Let's find out with our Won Ji-hun. At first glance, you might think this is just another ordinary park. But what you're seeing here is actually a water reservoir created by the Huea Dam located in the southern city of Ulsan. Despite its primary purpose as a drinking water reservoir, the constructed wetland becomes a popular tourist attraction for lovers of the great outdoors every year. Its well-preserved ecosystem offers an abundance of plant life, creating a sanctuary for its many visitors. I've always wanted to come here, and now after seeing all the water lilies that are spread out all over, I feel as if my heart has also expanded a bit. It made me feel really good. Since 2012, the city has turned the reservoir into an eco-park that's open to the public for about a month in the summer. 
This massive area of more than 170,000 square meters is home to more than 30 kinds of plants, like cattails and various reeds. City officials say the plant life plays a role in improving water quality in the reserve. We'll be sure to preserve the wildlife in the reservoir to help with the water's natural purification process. This year, the Huayadam Reservoir will stay open to public until August 20th, and admission to the park, which includes a guided tour, is free. But you'll want to book a spot before you visit. Only 100 visitors are admitted per day. Those who want to go will need to call ahead or make reservations online. Won Ji-hyun, Arirang News. And now for a quick look at the weather before we go. Heat advisories have been lowered in most parts of Korea thanks to the frequent showers as of late. But brace yourself for another scorcher on Monday when the mercury will shoot up to a new high with the sweltering 32 expected in Seoul, 33 in Daejeon and 35 in Daegu. That's Korea for you. Let's take a look at the weather conditions in your neck of the woods and around the world. That's it for me for now. Do join us for more at 10 p.m. Korea time. Thanks for watching.